Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the second afternoon session. Um, I'll be presenting on regional approaches to coordinated surveillance and our progress over the past year. And then we'll have a presentation by Anne Fortin from WHO. And then again, welcoming back Andrew Asman. Hold on. So my name is Alexandra Medley. I'm the subgroup lead for the regional approaches to coordinated surveillance subgroup within the surveillance working group. And this is a pretty new subgroup. Uh, we've been uh, in development since October of 2020. And this was really born out of the strong recognition that as we move towards national level cholera control of free status, uh, that this needs to be maintained really at the sub-regional and then regional level. And how do we do that? It will really require this strong collaboration and coordination between countries, sub-regions and region and staying aware of surveillance at this sub-regional or regional level. So this is a new thematic area for the GTFCC Surveillance Working Group. And since October, through our last session in April, where we met virtually, we have been assembling a dedicated sub-working group with the active participation of many of the regional stakeholders and points of contact. And as we presented on last April, we began with a starting point to inform our work plan as a subgroup with a landscape analysis of regional organizations' state of play of their activities. I'll present very briefly, given our short time, on our main overarching findings from this landscape analysis, but then spend most of the time on what we're working on right now, a framework or a regional framework for coordinated cholera surveillance and the supporting tools for this framework. So in our landscape analysis state of play, we looked at a number of different activities conducted at the regional platform level, as well as the engagement or activities that regional platforms were conducting with countries. And our findings, our main overarching finding, was that there was intense diversity between the regions, and I'm sure that's of no surprise to anyone. Of course, there were a different variety of stakeholders at play within the region, and the level at which those stakeholders were engaged varied greatly. And the activities that we looked at in this landscape analysis, the level at which these were implemented, if at all, varied, as well as the desire to continue those activities, build those activities up, or start them anew. But we did find, overall, that there were operational mechanisms in place for these regional organizations. And what we really came out from that is that as we go forward in building a regional framework, that we want to embrace the diversity that we recognized in this landscape analysis and build on those existing mechanisms. And our goal is not to uh, harmonize operational mechanisms and processes across the regions, but really build on what exists and think more about the critical missions and core objectives and priorities. And of course, we want to continue to involve, engage, and consult the regional stakeholders. So I want to talk a little bit about how we have approached this framework. As it stands right now, we're in a first draft of the framework and have just begun soliciting feedback. This framework is built as a stepwise approach to help a regional organization develop a regional action plan and strengthen core missions in a coordinated manner. It's intended for stakeholders of a regional organization and as I mentioned, these core missions do build upon the landscape analysis. We really looked to identify which were the activities that were key priorities for regional organizations and which were those that they would like to do um, but may have had challenges in implementation. Again, we are seeking to be structuring but never prescriptive. And we encourage integration where applicable, uh, recognizing that there is often a multi-disease approach. So the three core missions that we came out with for the coordination of regional cholera surveillance are first, to develop, animate, and sustain strong regional cholera networks. Our second is to monitor the cholera epi situation and risk at the regional level. And our third is supporting countries to strengthen uh, cholera surveillance. And I just want to elaborate a little bit more on what we mean by support. Uh, we do not mean the direct support by a regional organization of specific activities, but really the coordination of the stakeholders within the region who may be 
uh, themselves directly implementing the support. And so there may just simply be indirect support from a regional organization. I don't have time to go into all of the objectives in detail, given our short time today, but I did want to mention some of the sub-objectives within these three missions. So from developing and animating strong regional color and networks, we recognize the importance of a network of focal points and points of contact with strong communication mechanisms established, as well as the multi-directional alert and reporting channels. And of course, regular meetings to foster continued engagement and direct communication. For monitoring the epidemiological situation and risk at the regional level, we are recommending the collection of timely national surveillance data at the sub-regional or regional level, and the analysis of this data at the regional level, but with a regional perspective, and then of course the dissemination of regional level bulletins back to countries. We're also recommending assessing the risk for cross-border or sub-regional or regional spread and assisting in the coordination of preparedness and response activities. And then finally, and most importantly, the guiding to mid to long-term strategies, including towards regional cholera-free status. And finally, our third core mission, strengthening cholera surveillance by support to countries. We're recognizing the assessment and monitoring of country level capacities, and then providing that technical support accordingly, directly or indirectly, as well as supporting capacity building for data systems as needed for the early detection and adequate confirmation of cholera cases, and then the identification of hotspots with regional implication. And finally, supporting the bi-directional information sharing between cholera connected countries. So I mentioned that we have a stepwise approach for this regional framework in our first draft. And there are three phases in this stepwise approach. The first is a self-assessment phase. The second is the development of a regional action plan. And the third is an implementation phase. So in phase one, we are working on developing a tool for a stakeholder mapping exercise, or really the identification of the stakeholders and the roles they play. The second is to jointly, with the stakeholders, identify the current objectives and priorities and their state of play as they are right now. And this moves nicely into phase two, where they would use this information in the self-assessment phase to define their core objectives and priorities using the tool from phase one. And we are then working on developing an action plan framework where they could use these core objectives and priorities to really fill in their action items, as well as a monitoring and evaluation plan. And then phase three, of course, is to coordinate the implementation of this action plan and routinely monitor and evaluate their plan. And we are working right now on supporting implementation tools for uh, for this phase. And that's really the next priority for this group as we move forward from the solicitation of feedback on the regional framework and come to a consensus on the information therein to really work on these supporting tools. So what are our next steps in the way forward for the year? Uh, the first is that we have discussed uh, yesterday and today enlarging the scope from regional uh, coordinated cholera surveillance to regional and global level levels or the supranational level. Our second, as I mentioned, is to move forward with this regional framework, codify it and develop some supporting tools for implementation. And this is including, but certainly not limited to, the necessary data and indicators based on the objectives for supranational surveillance. Surveillance governance and data access policies, and then supranational epi bulletin and dashboard templates. And then finally, the identification of cross-border threats or hotspots with regional implications. And of course, throughout this process, we'll continue to actively engage regional stakeholders in this collaborative work. And I'd like to say thank you very much to a, a large and very active uh, subgroup over this past year in moving us towards finalizing our landscape analysis and now as we move into this framework. So thank you to all, and I will turn it over to Anne Fortin.